Hello and welcome to my second video commentary of a Ponitz mod Total War, Empire Total War Battle. This time I'm playing as Prussia. Just a small intro of my army. You can see them marching for battle. This is an, an image I thought very nice and just wanted to share this with you. Anyway, I'm doing a battle with Prussia. This battle, I must say, went better than I originally expected. I think I gave too much units to my uh, AI allied friend. Remember, I just tried to give them enough units for them to hold their own, to hold the AI, AI for a bit and cause little casualties, but give me time to at least deploy my armies. I'm um, just looking for the AI army, oh here it is. So the massive AI army the AI got was one unit of line infantry, two units of line infantry, sorry, one unit of grenadiers, two units of cuirassiers and uh, a couple of six pounders. And apparently this was a tad too much. Anyway, my armies are just marching for battles. I brought quite a balanced army, I brought a bit more cavalry than the last time, but after trading some PMs with Connets, I found out that this army is actually more historical of build, so I'll try to play with this one. Uh, the only thing I did was to give myself a bit more sanity infantry and a bit less uh, light infantry. I only brought a unit of Jaegers as Prussia. So, once battle lines are joined, I'll, put, I'll start the remaining video, so see you in a bit. So, welcome back. We rejoined the action of my Prussian army versus the Austrian AI. You can notice that this time I have already taken out the flags, which I feel adds a little bit of more realistic gameplay, let's call it that. I mean, without the flags, even doing battles without the flags, it's much more hard to distinguish your troops from, from the enemies and to know in which state your troops are, are in, because you don't have that handy flashy icon telling you that. So it, it further reduces your, your possible time of reaction. So it makes the game a bit more realistic. In reality, orders had to be sent and received and fulfilled. And in this game, we have the ability to change things instantly, which is not realistic at all. So this, together with line of sight, no matter how badly the AI, AI uses it, is a bit of a game breaker. Now, a bit about my deployment. Um, I'm deploying, as you can see, in what I consider to be a, a sturdy and strong position. My idea in this deployment was, I sent a unit of line, deployed in line, over through the main canyon, occupying as max the maximum of it as possible. I have here my Hussars in the front scouting, checking out for enemy units. Um, with uh, two of these, two other units of line heading for one flank, together with some guns. I gave myself a 3-pounder, a 6-pounder, and a 12-pounder. And uh, on this flank, it's my strongest flank, I have two units of, grenadia, of grenadiers, seven, several cavalry units, two units of line, and some Prussian Jaegers. Now, as a reserve, I left these two units over here. From this point in the path, they can go either way, depending on the battle, on how the battle was going from my side. These positions also are surrounded by forests, and as I said in the previous video, forests are very hard to pass, so it, provide me, it provides me some amount of protection. I left two of my cavalry units here behind this slope, so just that I wouldn't be outflanked through this path over here, and for them to reach my artillery wagons or whatever I have in the back. Now you see my grenadiers went through the forest, it was an error of mine, and we see that battle was joined. This cavalry charge, I managed to stop my energy time to be still and receive that charge. Oh sorry, this is not my cavalry charge, not the cavalry charge yet, sorry, it's my Hassas going through the middle of my line. Because we were being pursued by pursued by a unit of Crassiers. And that the AI is trying to outflank me through the forest. 
So the idea was for a unit to hit me in the front and another unit in the back. And what happened here was, as I was reacting to this cavalry unit, because you have to time your charge just right to cause an almost instant route. So I charged I charged the Rosars with these two units of Gracias. And uh, my cavalry here was an uh, order to counterattack, if I recall correctly. Because they still tried to get going even though they were charged. And what happened was that I forgot to engage fire at will from this line uh, infantry on again. And instead focus on the cavalry battle that was happening. My units behaving a bit erratic erratically. Not anything we're not expecting. And anyway, they find they managed, I managed to rot them even without my Ozars, but I decided to bring my Ozars to my right flank as well, to give an extra force of cavalry. And I have my other Corassias regrouping here. The Corassias that were already here. My two units that were used to rot this one. Anyway, um, meanwhile my line keeps pushing forward. And that cavalry is going to engage my line infantry. And one of the ni nicest things is this mod is that even without fire at will, they are still able to receive a, cavalry, a frontal cavalry charge if they are prepared to it. If they are standing, encouraged, you know, fresh or with high cohesion, as it should probably be called in this mod. Anyway, my cavalry is resting, and my infantry is arriving, and my artillery in the back. This game, uh, it was very hard, this map is not very good for artillery and I have a difficult position positioning my batteries being re the end result that they all ended up playing some sort of close close support field, close support, close support role. Now, as I was sending my two units on the right flank, I noticed that the, these guys were holding but they were losing men and after, even after engaging fire at wheel on it was they were not firing because they were engaged in, mele in the melee. So I actually diverted one of these from the initial deployment here so they could fire some, some pour some flanking fire on these Gracias and cause them to rot, rot and rot in hell. Anyway, so my deployment keeps on going. With not much, no, not a lot of action in, at this stage of the battle. I placed my left flank the strongest because ah here, a unit of the Corassias tried to charge my light infantrymen, and I realized that. Another thing that flags are handy, by the way, is that uh, it's harder to see enemy units. Even if they are visible, it's harder for you to spot spot them. Anyway, these Corassias were charging, so I ordered my skirmishing Jaegers that they actually have a decent field inside the forest to fire on the forest constrained and morale damaged Corassias uh, and that was enough to rot them with two casualties these guys are very accurate, they're very good so I'm reforming my cavalry three units of Corassias I decided to take my cavalry, all my cavalry out of the right flank because this flank was just to hold them, so to speak, while my left, left flank built up a strength to really attack. And this flank did quite a wonderful job, as you'll see further, further ahead in the video. Anyway, now the Hungarian saws that I routed came back and tried to route my hussars back. And so I'm just counter-turning it. Ah, just to finish my previous thought, sorry. Uh, my left flank is stronger also because it's the region of conversion of the two, two AI enemy armies. It's a pity this this map is so poor. The map choice in Empire of the Lore is so poor because this map is actually good if you take out this central ugly structure, this what attempts to be a valley, which would be a very nice and I think the battle will be best fought, a better battle will be fought in this area. This is my opinion, of course. You see, my allies are going to engage with the AI, the Allied Cavalry Charge, in which they send their unit of dragoons, and my Assas are wisely retreating while I face the enemy head on in the canyon. If you can have uh, flanking support of Gracias. So, welcome back. 
we rejoin the action of my Prussian army versus the Austrian AI. You can notice that this time I have already taken out the flags, which I feel adds a little bit of mm, more realistic gameplay, let's call it that. I mean, without the flags, even doing battles without the flags, it's much more hard to distinguish your troops from, from the enemies and to know in which state your troops are, are in because you don't have that handy flashy icon telling you that so it, it further reduces your your possible time of reaction so it makes the game a bit more realistic in reality orders had to be sent and received and fulfilled and in this game we have the ability to change things instantly which is not realistic at all so this together with line of sight no matter how badly the AI, AI uses it is a bit of a game breaker. Now, a bit about my deployment. Um, I'm deploying, as you can see, in what I consider to be a, a sturdy and strong position. My idea in this deployment was I sent a unit of line, deployed in line, over through the main canyon, occupying as max the maximum of it as possible. I have here my Hussars in the front scouting, checking out for enemy units. Um, with uh, two of these two other units of line heading for one flank together with some guns I gave myself a 3 pounder, a 6 pounder and a 12 pounder and uh, on this flank, it's my strongest flank I have two units of, grenadia, of grenadiers, seven, several cavalry units two units of line and some Prussian Jaegers. Now, as a reserve, I left these two units over here. From this point in the path, they can go either way, depending on the battle on how the battle was going from my side. These positions also are surrounded by forests, and as I said in the previous video, forests are very hard to pass, so it, provide me, it provides me some amount of protection. I left two of my cavalry units here behind this slope, so just that I wouldn't be outflanked through this path over here and for them to reach my artillery wagons or whatever I have in the back. Now you see my grenadiers went through the forest, it was an error of mine and we see that battle was joined. This cavalry charge I managed to stop my energy time to be still and receive that charge. Oh sorry, this is not my cavalry charge, not the cavalry charge yet, sorry, it's my Hassas going through the middle of my line. Because we were being pursued by pursued by a unit of Crassiers, and that their the AI is trying to outflank me through the forest. So their idea was for a unit to hit me in the front and another in the back. And what happened here was, as I was reacting to this cavalry unit, because you have to time your charge just right to cause an almost instant rout. So I charged I charged their Osars with these two units of Crassiers. And uh, my cavalry here was an uh, order to counterattack, if I recall correctly, because they still tried to get going even though they were charged. And what happened was that I forgot to engage fire at will from this line uh, infantry on again, and instead focus on the cavalry battle that was happening. My units behaving a bit erratically, not anything we're not expecting. And anyway, I, find they managed, I managed to rot them even without my Ozaas, but I decided to bring my Ozaas to my right flank as well, to give an extra force of cavalry. And I have my other Corassias regrouping here. The Corassias that were already here. My two units that were used to rot this one. Anyway, um, meanwhile my line keeps pushing forward. And that cavalry is going to engage my line infantry. And one of the ni nicest things is this mod is that even without fire at will, they are still able to receive a, cavalry, a frontal cavalry charge if they are prepared to it. If they are standing, encouraged, you know, fresh or with high cohesion, as it should probably be called in this mod. Anyway, my cavalry is resting, and my infantry is arriving, and my artillery in the back. This game, it was very hard, this map is not very good for artillery and I have a difficult position positioning my batteries being the end result that they all ended up playing some sort of close 
close support field, close support, close support group. Now, as I was sending my two units on the right flank, I noticed that the these guys were holding, but they were losing men. And after, even after engaging fire at wheel on, it was they were not firing because they were engaged in, mele in the melee. So I actually diverted one of these from the initial deployment here, so they could fire some, some pour some flanking fire on these cuirassiers and cause them to rot, rot, and rot in hell. Anyway, so my deployment keeps on going with not much, no, not a lot of action in, at this stage of the battle. I placed my left flank the strongest because ah here. A unit of the Cuirassiers tried to charge my light infantrymen, and I realized that. Another thing that flags are handy, by the way, is that uh, it's harder to see enemy units. Even if they are visible, it's harder for you to spot, spot them. Anyway, these Cuirassiers were charging, so I ordered my skirmishing Jaegers, that they actually have a decent field inside the forest, to fire on the forest constrained and morale damaged Cuirassiers. Uh, and that was enough to rot them with two casualties. These guys are very accurate, they're very good. So, I'm reforming my cavalry. Three units of Gracias. I decided to take my cavalry, all my cavalry out of the right flank because this flank was just to hold them, so to speak, while my left, left flank built up a strength to really attack. And this flank did quite a wonderful job, as you'll see further, further ahead in the video. Anyway, now the Hungarian saws that I routed came back and tried to route my hussars back. And so I'm just counter-turning it. Ah, just to finish my previous thought, sorry. Uh, my left flank is stronger also because it's the region of conversion of the two, two AI enemy armies. It's a pity this this map is so poor. The map choice in Empire of the War is so poor because this map is actually good if you take out this central ugly structure, this what attempts to be a valley, which will be a very nice and I think the battle will be best fought, a better battle will be fought in this area. This is my opinion of course. You see my allies are going to engage with the AI the Allied Cavalry Charge, in which they send their unit of Dragoons, and my Assas are wisely retreating while I face the enemy head-on in the canyon, if you can have uh, flanking support of Gracias. Right. And this was one of the things that, that I learned in this mod, is that, through some battles, is that you really need to keep the cavalry in check. Cavalry, per se, is not as destructive as in Vanilla Empire Total War or some other mods, but its effect on morale is just devastating. You need to have a, you need to always keep the cavalry, the enemy cavalry in check because if they manage to get on your flank, you're done for basically. So I was quite happy. The, the, this battle went very well because I think I managed to destroy that cavalry. So my units are approaching that cavalry through the flanks and are going to open fire. You see that they are shaken just because they started to have a, u a unit of my infantry on their flank. They haven't even engaged yet. And now they will start to fire anytime soon. Ah, there they go. They immediately make some casualties and basically that cavalry is broken. And now all my infantry that had their muskets loaded ended up firing in their backs. Which is quite a nice touch, I think. And remember that you... You, you see, it's only about uh, five models died. But you have to remember that each model actually represents four uh, what four cavalrymen would be each model of a cavalryman. So you have to multiply the casualties, the five, uh, the eight guys that died from this close range musketry, you have to multiply it by five, by four, sorry. So it's like they killed 40 horsemen out of a squadron of 120. 
killing 40 horsemen is a lot. Really, if you take a look at the historical records of battles, that's more or less the number of casualties that, uh, for instance, a, a failed square breaking attempt would cause. For you to have the idea of the insane amount of casualties that this would represent. Which is one of the best parts of this mod, is that morale is very much linked to casualties, so even a unit suffering low casualties can be completely shattered and lose any combat value. Now I'm really pulling the line in my right flank to receive that cavalry. At this point I think I decided also, yes, to send my 3-pounder to the middle of these two formations so it could serve as a as it's regimental again, basically. Now I'm reorganizing my army so infantry and cavalry are clashing and getting bundled up together. And they send my cur their cuirassiers after mine. But here I counter charge them with these cuirassiers and hold them in place until the backup arrives, which was under fire from Grenzas at a very long distance. taking Malsas to the other side. I thought it was time to and a force of Gracias and squadron of Gracias to really hold this flank in place. It's amazing what apparently like a small force can do to the choices your opponent has to make. It's great really, I do love this mod. This is astonishing. Anyway, my Gracias got bundled with the Grenadiers stupidity because I realized the AI changed target and was after my Jaegers, so I wanted to get them out of here. In this battle it was very easy for me to preserve my Jaegers because it was always in some kind of protected position like woods or very near my infantry. They actually survived the whole battle and spent their entire ammunition, ending the battle with a gallant bayonet charge to an artillery, to an artillery three-pounder gun. Uh, this was their second attempt to use cavalry to attack my guys, and again they were repulsed with heavy casualties. Two more casualties, so eight guys, and they broke just because they lost eight guys basically, which is very good. And I was quite happy to spot this in time. It's amazing that even though it's a one-to-one -one time scale, one session begins, you have you have actually very little time to make some corrections. I think that mods that use a more constricted time scale. On one side, a battle doesn't take two hours. On the other hand, I think many of my mistakes are easier to correct because the the gap to exploit them is that much smaller. So they don't make such big such a big deal. Uh, I've also decided, by the way, to send my these two units as I seen their show of force in these flanks, which is very little to none at the moment, and send these units to the center as well. My idea was to break through the center and hold this flank here, then I can I could easily route whatever attacking force they mustered here and focus then on my left. Because here I will only be attacked by part of one AI. In the left flank I will be attacked by both of them basically. Yeah and their dragoons managed to do what? No, they didn't manage to do anything. These Gracias were the ones that were attacking me and they were routed without too much of a fuss and reorganizing my cavalry again it seems that half the things in this game you do is reorganizing cavalry after each attack which is quite well realistic as well cavalry had to re-rally, reorganize and then they could be effective for a proper charge and moods had to be tempered as well now I stopped my cavalry obviously before going into the woods because of the aforementioned problems and now the other AI is building quite a force in this flank, which I took. O I was aware that I had to take care of if I didn't want to lose this battle. So my infantry is deployed here in columns to be easier to maneuver and to go to some positions, and my grenadiers are in front. And I'm bringing my artillery is still in the back. I'm bringing general to this flank to help in the line of sight because without flags it's very easy to see units, very hard to see units in woods. It should be mandatory to play without flags. So 
so while we, we wait for something, a quick overview of my deployment so far. I think I took too much time to advance my center here, because I should keep my troops closer together, because they will... Distance, distances are way further apart than people think. It's one of the things you have to get used to it here. Because of the ground scale, basically. And another good thing is that this loose forest doesn't delay my units as much as these denser forests. So the Derebrenses keep shooting at my cavalry. Much good will do them, I don't think they kill anyone actually. They just expended all their ammunition at very long range. For nothing. Now I'm bringing my other cavalry here to deal, better deal with their cuirassiers because they were starting to charge. I allow them graciously to charge uphill for as long as they wanted. Uh, my units were resting watching the show. Obviously, horsemen trying to climb a hill to charge. And I think it was about then that I noticed that they were bringing us a battalion of grenadiers. So I had to order my units to counter charge once they left the field and extricate my cavalry from here so I wouldn't lose them. Because they really are essential. Now I realized that these guys were in auto fire and these were not. So I had to disconnect these guys auto fire and these were not on purpose. I was waiting for the best time to deliver a volley which I think I actually managed to go quite well. Here they go. No one. But yeah, yeah, he's playing smart, he's walking their battalions. They are with low cohesion now because they are coming out of a forest, which is not so smart. Ah, finally. Four guys are, have, have died. Ah. This was, I think, a long pause I had to take because I had to answer a phone, so I'll stop for now and we'll rejoin once battle is start. Cheers. Hello again. We rejoin battle. Sorry about that. Bloody phone calls. Anyway, now they really start to get hit badly. It's funny because these two log piles here are just impassable, so they have to actually converse to the center while remaining under fire. They have to alter their reformation while remaining under fire, which is very good. Now the AI did some of the usual AI blunder and decided that the middle corridor was a very nice place to send all their artillery in. I was actually worried that they blow my center, so I actually decided to move forward. And they are attempting to catch me with a couple of Renzas here in this flank. But since I have artillery, and more men than they do, I'm not very worried about that. These guys meanwhile broke, with 30 casualties, or 120. And there's now how damaging for the morale for of a battalion it would be for to lose 120 men at one in one failed charge. So I'm readjusting my cavalry, and I think that by this time, or a little while, I'll send these two units to cover this part of the air, this part of the attack here. And we'll catch them in some decent fire, and then my cavalry to break them, basically. Another break. Mm. Well, once again, once section is rejoined... Oh, oh it was still a fast one. No, it is. So I move my grenadiers a bit forward, and I'm bringing my... 6-pounder or just delivery. To the front as well. 
and still my Gracias and my Osas are here waiting for them to uncover that flank. So basically my plan will be now that their infantry has to be basically everywhere. They still have a unit of Grenzers here firing at my cavalry, and I noticed that my AI friend was yet to, had yet to engage. Which is quite surprising because usually he managed to kill himself by now. And therefore, in the comment that I think I gave him too much units. But it could be to the fact that in this map the AI seem to use their line of sight pretty well, and they, for most of the time, from when I was still walking into position until the first, first confrontations, you didn't see the AI armies in the map. So they managed to send an infant, infantry battalion of Grenadiers, apparently, but I don't think they take part in the in the battle, I don't recall correct, correctly. And well, they sent a battalion of Grenzas, which will be promptly bayonet charged. to put them in their place. And there they go. Broken. Without even fighting. Ow, it's... Well, I don't blame them. See? Their captain was killed. And now I'm advancing my right flank because I think one of those Grenzes, I don't know, they, they still are here, the Austrian Grenzes on my right flank. But I think I, th because I'm moving them so much forward, I thought that actually they had to take a new unit there to place it here to attack. It's another amazing thing to play without flight, you don't, you missed units on the field. It's great. Ah. We know El Vital and my central rules joined, and I moved my other two infantry battalions to pour some flanking fire. This one's behind my Jaegers who are wrecking havoc. I will shoot them again. I will shoot your positions yet again. Now my Gracias will... I don't know why I left my Gracias here, but I, tur I charge with my Dragoons. Uh, my Osas, sorry. And they were engaged, this line infantry was tiring itself in a very long range firefight, so they would break pretty easily. They had spent their muskets, they were not paying attention, they got hit by flank. So you see they're already wavering, shaken, wavering, broken. There they go. And then I think I kept the momentum of the charge and charged the second battalion, but this one was of Grenadiers, and I think my horses ran, yeah. When I ordered them to charge, they started, to, they broke and ran. They were too disorganized to keep moving forward the attack. But I had my Gracias in reserve, so no big deal. And as you can see, half of their attack force has already gone through the roof, so I can move my units a bit closer. And I moved especially my light infantry closer because I want them to really make these guys hurt. They are sending another grenade battalion. I gave the AI a lot, a lot of grenades, much more than than me because well, they need it. Here. My Prussian ally is still moving forward with all his infantry. I think his cavalry is probably already gone. I have him lethal as well. Oh no! A unit of Gracias here. 
now my line infantry is firing at the Grenadiers and causing casualties, which is good. You know, my cavalry will regroup back here somewhere. I had a unit of cavalry who, of Gracias who, who routed, and I'm bringing her back. And actually, this is my other unit of Gracias, yes, this is not my own. This is what's wrong with me today. Oh, I think in the meantime a battalion. Yeah, they are trying to send a, a unit of Gracias through the forest. Again, a bad idea. The AI seems to love to do this though. Never the my cross. No, this is. What did I order my grasses to do? They are acting like if they're attacking. Yeah, there was. Ah, I must have. Now I understand what happened. There was a unit of grasses disappeared from my sight, and I didn't know what had, what had happened. Apparently, I must have clicked on this 3 pounder artillery by mistake and they charge it. But it was nice because later in the game I noticed that I had them here standing. So they helped to get rid of the Austrian center. Now I've changed this battalion of grenadiers here to break these guys. And this one to break this. Actually this is not a battalion, it's called Converse Grenadiers, it's the commercial companies of grenadiers that the Line infantry battalions had, I think. Ah, and my artillery, meanwhile, is starting to also fire, pouring some close-range cannon, some long-range canister, or oh, heavy canister, into the midst of the woods to try and take out some more guys. And meanwhile, these grenadiers are in for a nasty surprise. My line infantry did their work, held their own in a long, long firefight. And now my grenadiers catch them in their flanks. And I obviously stopped the fire at will from this unit. This is actually already to move to its next position. And my Jaegers kept thinning the number of men as well. So they're still steady, but they, were, they are with very low cohesion, and my attackers are with very high cohesion. It's a shame my localization file doesn't work. Make things more interesting. Now I'm killing these grenades that are coming through the woods and obviously sending my big force of cavalry to encircle their flank and catch them off guard. I'm moving them very slowly as you have to. This unit of grenades is gone. Lost 160 men. I think it's more impressive if I say the numbers without the scale of 4 to 1. And a good exercise for your mind as well. So you see, my troops are getting some kind of. See if you can see it on the minimap. No, it's very confusing this minimap. Napoleon Total War is a much better minimap. But they are making this shape. Of, um, it looks like it has a, a small vertice here, a small triangle in the line, which will now be closed because now I can. This space, this area that was. This is another thing why scales are important. I don't think people stress this enough. When you have proper scaling, the proper frontage and the proper area of Italian covers is represented. That's why one of the most important aspects of scaling. So I couldn't move my. Grenadiers here, not because the other Grenadiers, the enemy Grenadiers, were actually in this space physically, but it was in their area of intervention. And so, to, it's not just a slower speed that makes battle slower and have more flow. It's what the, it's also these kinds of details, like the distance covered, the area of influence where the other Grenadiers could still reach and protect and cause my Grenadiers some heavy losses. This is all very important for a realistic mod, so. We, it's basically a must for any mod that calls itself realistic. It 
it's really, really important. Look at them reforming. And my artillery firing. Oh, you have action on the right flank, yes. They sent an attack of two battalions of line infantry, which were early under fire, and I will place my 3 pounder here and my 12 pounder here. And well, you can guess what happens to a battalion or uh, to a battalion when faced with a 12 pounder. But meanwhile, they're constantly under fire, and even though the long range, the range is very long, they still manage to lose some men because there are lots of muskets firing. Another thing important about scales to have the proper number of muskets for the proper frontage firing. Well, it's. It's not really the same because since scales are 4 to 1 everywhere, it means that I'm not actually in 2 or 3 men, or with 3 ranks deep, and uh, 3 ranks. I'm actually in 4 times that number. But well, it's the best we can do. Or actually, it isn't. I'm saying silly things. I'm sorry. Or is it? Well. No, because we have the same number of men, no it isn't the same thing. It's okay this way. Anyway, it looks nice. Now we're seeing what they're seeing. Must be quite a view on see two battalions, roughly a thousand men a bit more slowly advancing against you. needed to have steel nerves. Now they decided to go back because they were probably taking too much casualties and saw my artillery approaching, so there's, they were in a severe disadvantage. And I meanwhile kept moving my center, but I still think I did it too late. Should have moved it a bit earlier. But anyway, it will only shorten the battle, not the scale of the victory. Anyway, I'm now firing at their remaining center, while I send some units here to protect this flank. And my cavalry is just... Uh, so they, they broke because they were attacking... Uh, they attacked these grenadiers, they attacked... Uh, these, these grenadiers, and then they attacked these grenadiers. Remember, those are, that I was flanking. Damn, missed, missed the flanking maneuver. Sorry about that. Anyway, my Ossars were back, so I started to bring them to the left flank, slowly as these things take, to take, that, take that time, and meanwhile I'm reforming my artillery to deploy them a bit closer to the front. And my Gracias yet also came back, so everything is good. Ah, I moved my center finally. And now these guys are coming back at me again, because they didn't have enough. And now my 12-pounder begins firing. So you see, even in a one-to-one -one time scale, I'm still having trouble to follow everything that's happening on the field. Yeah, bring more. The Gracias that routed, and my Gracias that are here. And they are bringing these Grenadiers forward, which came back also after a rout. So I'm bringing my Grenadiers here, and you can see this unit of Grenadiers, which just started to run. Or they were, were they already running? I don't know, but they were already shot it. No, so they won't come back ever again. And so my cannons start to play their music. Uh, this I misplaced this cannon, I think, and in one of the shots they literally killed <laughs> the left part of this unit. They are fast though, didn't rout, which was very nice of them. Because they could have seriously disarranged my flank. So the battle is pretty even at this point, though you can see uh, you can see my momentum rising, so to speak. And now they are trying to make a cavalry charge through the forests, and I don't, don't know if I saw it or not. But I'm really starting to gain my momentum, and they really need to do something, or else I will turn their entire line of battle around. Meanwhile, my Gracias stopped running, which was nice. 
Again, cavalry here is very important. I'm re withdrawing my Jaegers because by this time they spent all their ammunition. I mean, all their ammunition. They fired quite a lot, those chaps. And I think it's now since I switched to heavy canister. Yeah, they started to kill them. <laughs> they started to kill their own men. Bastards. And I saw the cavalry trying to deploy, so I hurriedly sent off my line infantry. To advance? Sound the general charge. Yeah, I hit some men here as well. So I'm now firing and my grasses are fresh, basically. I'll end infantry keep them keeping them busy while my center here or the center of my left flank, which is basically an army corps of their own. It has everything, artillery, cavalry and infantry. It's the only flank to have those luxuries. Uh, here there they placed some Brenzons in the woods trying to kill my infantry which came from this infantry really. It's a shame that we don't have more customizable options for custom battles like in Shogun 2 because I really want to take this, this infantry forward. They defeated Corassias, Mine Infantry and Grenzas and they held their own and, uh, even though they suffered some heavy casualties. They held their own till the end of the game. It was very nice. Meanwhile, my line infantry just finished killing their artillery and then just in time to reform to receive their Corassias. Yeah, you see the number of men my artillery killed. Quite a few, huh? So I ordered my, my infantry to go a bit sideways. And I'm finally getting to the point where my center is free to move at last. Yeah, if I had moved them sooner, I probably wouldn't have nearly as many casualties as I did here in the center in the companies of my left flank center. Still, they're doing that job. They did that job. They killed who they were supposed to kill. Anyway, I charged with these Corassias, I charged these uh, Grenzas here to finally rob them, which they did. And I also, uh, I think I just didn't even manage to make the charge. I just rode near the. I oh, know this is my line infantry, sorry. These Grenadiers here. Just approached the Grenadiers and they started to run immediately. There's a lot of left action in this left flank. Yeah, it's basically where my victory will be made, it will be on this flank. On my right flank things are just peachy. They are all running for the woods. My cannon's still firing because I was paying attention to my left flank. So basically the grenade is sought to fire at my cavalry, which is protected by this, or to this infantry, to my cavalry probably, which is protected through this hill. But I take it away anyway, so that the their, my allied infantry can pass. This is why I think I gave it too much troops. They still had troops left by now, which made the battle a bit, well, made it end a bit sooner. My grass has stopped running, so they'll be going back to the front soon now. Meanwhile, I also saw that I have my Carassias here stopping, so stopped, so I charged their their Grenadiers from the center and wheeled my entire front to the left. And once again had to limber artillery because they couldn't do much of a job where they were standing. And these guys were going through the middle of a wood. Yay, I killed one Grenza with musket fire. Anyway, with now 
their right flank pretty much destroyed, they already routed once, they have uh, all the penalties like morale chalk for the number of units lost, all those things, so they're very easy now, easy peasy. Anyway, my Croatias will just finishing with this unit of Grenadiers, and next I realign them here, and actually, yeah, I didn't behave so badly. They actually tried to assemble a force of something. Now I'm sending my cavalry to... But they were interrupted by infantry, from my alley, no doubt, and charged the grenadiers in the flank. Only, they were under also... I knew this line infantry was here, but... I tried to catch them in both, both flanks, you see? And they are chattered. Which is also pretty realistic. I mean, even if you don't lose too many guys, imagine how you'd feel being in a unit where <laughs> you were hit in both flanks by cavalry and in front by grenadiers. So I quickly withdraw my cavalry. Oh, Sarge isn't brought here. Meanwhile, my other cavalry is arriving. And you are starting to see why it is so important to have to keep your cavalry till the very end. My other unit of cavalry went to the center. And was resting, still tired, you can see, tired with low cohesion. And meanwhile my, I ordered my land infantry to wheel around it, and this one to go here, where they will swap some fire. Remember that these units are absolutely fresh, they haven't got tired, they haven't even seen battle, so they have a huge advantage of, over battle-worn troops. And this is what I was banking, to take this around. I only, my only change would be to make them arrive, make them arrive sooner, but with all the action you kind of forget to move things around. And a charge of the grenzes and they're off. AI friend finally managed to suicide his entire army with these guys and these guys here in the front all alone and supported. Yeah, it instead of that. You can see here the difference of speed between forest movement and out of forest movement. It's crazy. Now I'm moving my cavalry here to catch these guys on the flank since these guys will be soon to be deceased. At least as a battle force. So this unit now is getting fired at from three sides. Which means it won't last for long. And then I spotted that Gracias here. And had to realign my Stream right unit because otherwise they would be flank charged by Gracias coming out of woods. Playing without flags makes woods make me wonder two two times, make me think two times about committing cavalry troops to woods because you can't see them. It's impressive. You need, really need to pay a, to pay a lot of attention. So even though they come in, uh, they come totally disorganized, they can still cause quite an impact because they appear by surprise on your flanks is quite important as well. As important, if not more important than the rest. Anyway, these grenadiers are out routing from the Austrian infantry. We still have one unit of line infantry left. So Austria sends its line infantry through because my units has formed and they began firing, only I ordered my Hassas and my Gracias to charge them immediately. Yep, and there they go. They broke, because they were very disorganized from the forest. And I ordered my other Gracias to also join on the party. And these guys, the AI, had to remove these guys from here and from the support and to try and cover the right flank and 
they just don't have enough strength to do so. They don't have, I mean, they don't have enough strength to keep both their sides active. They couldn't, they didn't have the strength needed to keep on attacking without the support from those troops. They couldn't keep them the weight of the attack. And of course, this line infantry unit bro broke by sympathy. And my cavalry keeps on doing a number. And I allowed it to go a bit too long, I think, because I was paying attention to the other parts of the map. This unit of Renegades here that came back is soon to be departed by my two units from the center here, which is, will just wheel in and finish. My right flank was supported by an extra battalion from, from this center regiment that was advancing. So I just gave him a support battalion to route these guys and help them until I took it back, actually. Because I figured that with cannons these guys could hold their own versus, after breaking their cavalry, hold their own versus whatever else they got here, which is not much, it's just an extra battalion already routed. So if they route once again they're probably not going to come back ever. They have two battalions with two artillery in support, so I really need troops over in this area, which is where I'm turning my battle lines now. Now I'm advancing infantry and artillery to bring a shower of rain and destruction of death and destruction over them. And I'm sending these units through the forest. Infantry isn't as bad as cavalry, still I don't like to do it, but it's really the shortest way to get them on the flank. And my cavalry has been well getting in position. To just charge them from the flanks. And my line infantry is running after these guys, but I, I stopped them because it's, it's pretty unnecessary. Just bring them forward. Oh no, this is the AIs. Actually, they are here. Sorry. It's quite confusing, you know, that attack saying it's AI or if it's yours. So you can see long, how effective long range fire is. I have my Gracias here. And they've been firing at them for quite a while and they still haven't managed to kill a single one of them. And now my infantry is arriving and my cavalry on their backs. Resting a bit just to get in shape stick with enough cohesion to send them all to hell, basically. And all the remaining strength they had is basically vanished, because they don't have anything else. Actually, a fire attack came from this direction. I didn't notice that they still had some troops back here. So the final attack came from here, and it actually boosted by the threat, because it, I was very advanced and I wasn't expecting this force to appear on my flank. So these guys were basically charged by my... by my cavalry. thin line, I don't know why. Didn't mean to do it is what I mean. Still managed to get some shots in, which is good to break them morale. Now this is also good to break them morale apparently. And this to catch them here on that flank. I was afraid actually that they might rob my unit of line, but they didn't, it's those guys that resisted, that earlier I mentioned, resisted everything. A cavalry charge, everything. A flank charge by Grenadiers. A front and front and flank charge by Grenadiers. And they held fast. Nice. 
mais. Anyway, the line of trailers is basically pretty much gone. And uh, I think some units of my cavalry ended up rotting here because they were very tired. Or not. No, I don't think I lose any more cavalry units actually. I'm thinking of it. So this is where their final attack is coming from. You can see it's quite a strong force, four battalions. But luckily for me, they already have no cavalry and no artillery because I killed it all in the various engagements around here. And anyway, their line infantry is pretty much beat here, so. What I'm now trying to do is to run against time to catch these guys. Not that I have a lot that matters here, man. It's not. I don't really have a lot here, but I want to stop them in a way that I can bring the most units to bear. And that would be in this area here. My units right now will just spread it out because I thought that this was basically the final units and that I would kill them and they would go be gone. It wasn't. Anyway, the guys are still confident with them. So I tried to bring them here but they kept advancing so I had to bring them a bit back. And the problem is that some of my units went through the forest. So the end result is that they left this poor unit of Grenadiers facing this poor battalion of Grenadiers facing four battalions of the line infantry. And three actually and one of Grenadiers. One converts unit of Grenadiers. These Grenadiers are gone. There are ones that come back and actually manage to kill a unit of my cavalry. My artillery actually. Now I'm taking away the 12 pounders bringing them to give some more up and close support. Everywhere you look the body is literally reduced with Austrians. Quite an intense battle for them. I lost surprisingly few little I lost the surprisingly few men in this battle actually. It went very, very well. this attack and see its unpredictable outcome of a single battalion versus two battalions of infantry and the, bat the battery of cannons, a regimental battery, be it as it may. And there they go, losing. Just a bit of reshuffling to realign my battalions. Just skip back to the left flank crisis, where I'm still ordering all my cavalry around, still trying to bring everything to bear. And it's silly now that I analyze the battle, I don't know why I was so. It's just, I think it's just the continuation of this mod. I was just so. I could easily have picked them off left and walking, meandering around here, I could have deployed here somewhere closer to all my troops and that would allow me more time to engage, but I just panicked a bit, I think. This is actually only three battalions, I thought they were four. Well, anyway, two battalions of mine and one battalion of grenades. grenades is still a force to contend, contend with. See, this is the problem of going into woods. You still have troops coming out of there, you're not forming properly. Anyway, up on this flank, everything is still going according to plan. Still 
join the crackle of musketry. Now I order the charge by the battalion on the right. And there they go. They're actually firing against something. You know what? But they're firing. Taking my Jaegers away. That this is when I charge there. They have an infantry battery here. Don't ask me how I found it. Took me a bit of trouble, actually. Italian to go back and this one will also stop, fire some shots in inside the woods and go back. Just a generally going to moving to the to the left kind of thing. Very progressive. Anyway, my grenadiers engage a bit of their on infantry. They will be redeployed ASAP because they need to be off somewhere else. So basically this battle is pretty much over. Once I beat this attack, this last ditch attack from the Austrians, the game pretty much ends. So important things to note is just well as I said previously, and I repeat again, this is a very realistic mod. All the I think I mentioned some important aspects of the of what a realist mod entails, like the scales and the the importance they have. And well, I hope you you liked it. So I'll just leave you with the end of the battle with no comment to just enjoy it. Cheers.